Today's young women are starting their working lives at nearly equal pay with men, but there's no guarantee that they will stay this close in the years to come. A new study by the Pew Research Center looks at how the pay gap between women and men has narrowed but persisted over the last 30 years. More than 30 years ago, a woman earned 64 cents for every dollar a man earned. The difference in earnings, or the pay gap, was 36 cents. Since then, the pay gap has shrunk. Now, women make 84 cents for every dollar men earn a 16 cent gap. And each new group of young women has narrowed the gap even more. Let's take a look at the young women starting out in 1980. While women overall earned 64 cents for every dollar men earned that year, young women could expect to make a little more, 67 cents. Taken at five year intervals, each successive group of young women has started out at a higher level steadily narrowing their pay gap with men the same age. By 2012, young women early in their working lives earned 93 cents for every dollar their male counterparts earned. These groups of young women also started out with the narrower pay gap than the pay gap for all working women. Why is the pay gap narrowed? There are several reasons. Women are better educated and more active in the workforce than they used to be. Many of them have moved into higher-paying occupations traditionally dominated by men, and men's earnings have fallen. Also, many workplace barriers and discriminatory practices have eroded over time. But the pay gap has also persisted, and in more recent years, it has narrowed more slowly. Let's take a closer look. Let's look back again at the 1980s, where working women of all ages made significant gains and closed the pay gap by 11 cents. But in later years, women did not make as much progress in closing the pay gap. Because of this overall pattern, young women who started out in the 1980s have done better over the course of their lives compared with later groups of young women. The young women who started out in 1980 built on the rapid progress of that decade and narrowed the pay gap with their male counterparts as they aged. And a young woman starting out in 1985 also benefited from the strong overall gains for women during this decade. She maintained about the same pay gap with men over her working life. But as progress for women overall slowed, the women starting their working lives in 1990 saw their pay gap with men widen slightly over time. Young women starting out in 1995 lost even more ground relative to men as they aged and so did the women starting out in 2000. No matter what their pay gap was when they started, all groups of women have moved toward the same pay gap. We don't yet know what the future may hold for today's youngest group of women who have been in the workforce for less than a decade. So why does the pay gap persist? And why do newer groups of young women fail to hold on to their early gains? Women are still mainly responsible for child and family care. Many of the mothers in our survey say they've taken a significant amount of time off from work, reduced their hours, or quit work to care for a child or other family member. Women also remain more likely to work in lower paying occupations than men do. For example, male-dominated science and engineering jobs pay a median hourly wage of $30, while female-dominated administrative support jobs pay less than $15 an hour. Gender discrimination may also contribute to the pay gap. Our survey found that women are more likely than men to say they've been discriminated against at work because of their gender. And both women and men say more needs to be done to bring about gender equality in the workplace. To learn more about the attitudes and experiences of women and men at work, Read the full report at pewresearch.org.